So I'm announcing this morning that I'm Never Nikki. And if you go to nevernikki.net, you can let her know that you're not a supporter either. I don't think any informed or knowledgeable libertarian or conservative should support Nikki Haley. I've seen her attitude towards our, invent, our interventions overseas. And I think her failure to really understand that or to think that you should register through the government somehow for the internet is something that should disqualify her in the minds of all libertarian, libertarian leaning conservatives. So I'm announcing today I'm Never Nikki. You can go to nevernikki.net and sign up and show her that you're never Nikki also. <laughs> Folks, I just love this. So Rand Paul announced today that he was going to be making his endorsement for the GOP candidates in 2024. And then when he actually released his endorsement video, it turns out that he was not ready to endorse anyone, right? He actually said that he likes certain aspects of Trump, Vivek and DeSantis respectively. But he did say in the video explicitly that he would not not be supporting Nikki Haley and told people not to vote for Nikki Haley under any circumstances. So long story short, it wasn't actually an endorsement video at all. It was just a video trashing Nikki Haley, which I found to be hilarious. I am 100% a big fan of, and uh, frankly, we need more of that, to tell you the truth. And honestly, I will say this. I do support Trump in the primary. I'm not like Rand Paul, where I'm totally undecided, but I do get his sentiment where when I look at our current GOP field, you know, whether it's Trump, Vivek, or even DeSantis, yes, okay, I know some of you guys think I really don't like the guy, and then some people say I'm not hard enough on him. The truth is, even if the nominee were DeSantis, any of those three people, I look at it and say, well, there are strengths and weaknesses of each person, but relatively speaking, we would live, right? Life would go on, you know, I would be content, I'll say, with any three of those people being the GOP nominee, although it's very likely going to be Trump. But the one person I look at in this race and say, this warmongering, corrupt, anti-conservative, globalist shill, Nikki Haley, cannot be the nominee under any circumstances. And to tell you the truth, if she ever saw a general election, I've explained this before, I don't even think I would vote for her then. And Rand Paul very masterfully in his quote unquote 2024 endorsement explains it quite well. And we will listen to that here and tell you how we feel and what we think. So let's take a listen. Good morning, everyone. As I told you yesterday, I'm ready to say something about the presidential race. I've had a long relationship with Donald Trump, and there's a lot to like there. I'm also a big fan of a lot of the fiscal conservatism of Ron DeSantis. I think Vivek Ramaswamy has been an important voice. Also have listened to and met with the independent Bobby Kennedy. I'm not yet ready to make a decision, but I am ready to make a decision on someone who I cannot support. So I'm announcing this morning that I'm never Nikki. And if you yes. Never Nikki .net, you can let her know that you're not a supporter either. Absolutely. I'm endorsing that. Everyone go right now to nevernikki.net. And that's kind of a very funny, subtle troll on Rand Paul's part, because if you watch the DeSantis debate with Nikki Haley, she constantly kept trying to plug that website. What was it? Ronlies.com or DeSantisLies.com. She kept saying it over to go to this website. So very glad to see Rand Paul used her own tactics against her, made her made uh, his own website. That's hilarious. I love to see that again. Fully endorse that website website. I don't think any informed or knowledgeable libertarian or conservative should support Nikki Haley. Yeah. I've seen her attitude towards our invent our interventions overseas. Mm -hmm. I've seen her involvement in the military industrial complex, eight million dollars being paid to become part of the team. Mm -hmm. But I've Boeing, by the way, if you're not fam I talk about this like every Nikki Haley video, but if you're not familiar, look it up. She was bankrupt. Her family was bankrupt after she left the U.N., joins the board of Boeing, makes eight million dollars. And now suddenly in this 2024 election is the biggest war hawk neocon there is. What do you think's going on there? Look into it, folks. And I, I think, you know, Rand Paul also makes a great point. He doesn't see how any informed conservative can support Nikki Haley. Well, there is the answer that outside of the very corrupt donor class that is behind Nikki for specific and particular reasons, I think the average voter, you know, her 
her handful of actual supporters out there. That's the real reason why they are not informed about the truth of this woman. And they never learn it because Fox News runs cover for her as well as liberal media that runs cover for her. You have to actually go on the Internet and look into her and look into her past and the truth about her to learn about that stuff. And you won't get that on cable news, which is why I think you know, a lot of 65 plus year olds are naively misinformed about the truth of this woman. It's true. I've also seen her indicate that she thinks you should be registered to use the Internet, that people posting ideas mm -hmm. anonymously. I think she fails to understand that our republic was founded upon people like Ben Franklin, Sam Adams, Madison, John Jay and others who posted routinely for fear of the government. They posted mm -hmm. routinely anonymously. And I think her failure to really understand that or to think that you should register through the government somehow for the Internet is something that should disqualify her in the minds of all libertarian, libertarian leaning conservatives. So I'm announcing today I'm Never Nikki. You can go to NeverNikki.net and sign up and show her that you're Never Nikki also. Thanks. And by the way, that point on the social media front, right? If you're not familiar, Nikki Haley says, in fact, I'll just play it right here so people who haven't seen the video can uh, see it for themselves. But yeah, long story short, Nikki Haley thinks that you should have to use your government issued ID to use social media. She thinks that information should be given to the social media companies. Take a listen to her say it for herself. And she tried to walk this back, by the way. She said this on several different occasions and now is claiming she never said it. But take a listen. Here she is saying that. When I get into office, the first thing we have to do, social media accounts, social media companies, they have to show America their algorithms. Let us see why they're pushing what they're pushing. The second thing is every person on social media should be verified by their name. That's first of all, it's a national security threat. When you do that, all of a sudden, people have to stand by what they say, and it gets rid of the Russian bots, the Iranian bots, and the Chinese bots. And then you're going to get some civility when people know their name is next to what they say. Accountability. And they know their pastor and their family member is going to see it. It's going to help our kids, and it's going to help but our But what country. no one is talking about that is, to me, a huge issue that I'll deal with as soon as I get there is social media. Hmm. So when you look at social media's role in the division of our country, the first thing I'm going to do is go to those social media companies and say, you have to show us your algorithms. I want the country to see the algorithm. So, you know, it's funny that you, if you think the first time her words were taken out of context, here's her saying the exact same thing again. And then that recent GOP debates, she tries to claim that she never said this. So that you can see how these companies move. The second thing is they need to verify every single person on their outlet because and I want it by name because when my well, name smart. does he because he qualify I, I've provided them with my government if, if, <laughs> if smug is on your driver's license then and look you can put smug in parentheses but I want everybody's name because guess what that does it gets rid of the Iranian bots the Russian bots the Chinese bots and the North Korean bots mm. when you look at the misinformation that is causing a yeah I, 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 this this woman pisses me off so much, okay? So obviously I shouldn't have to explain why that is a ridiculous and insane threat to free speech, right? I mean, people current, you know, anonymous speech actually is important on social media because not everyone like me, for instance, has the ability to, you know, given the current situations they're in, you see how many conservatives get fired from their jobs for things they post on social media all the time. Like if you're not able to be anonymous sometimes with free speech, then you don't have free speech. And furthermore, I think actually the biggest danger of this is not even necessarily that it's the fact that you're now creating a database of everyone's government issue ID and what they're saying on social media, right? How do you think that's going to be used? Nikki Haley herself personally says, I want everyone's name. And, you know, we saw what the Patriot Act has been used to do post January 6th, right? Same exact story. A neocon Republican Bush, you know, sets up this unconstitutional national security state in the name of, hey, keeping the country safe. There's threats to our country, which notice she does the same exact thing with the supposed Chinese bots that are on social media as if Chinese bots spreading misinformation 
information or saying mean things is somehow a justification to blatantly take away the First Amendment on the Internet. Right. But you create this sort of threat. You vastly overreach government powers. And then inevitably, you now that you've created the security infrastructure, what do you think the next Democrat president is going to do with that database of names on social media and specifically their political ideology, their affiliations and what they are saying on the Internet? You don't think that'll be used against you? Wake up, geniuses, idiots. But look, we've talked about this before. My point in hammering this home is that I think it ties back to Rand Paul's point about how can any informed conservative actually support Nikki Haley and kind of my point about how I think a lot of her, especially older supporters, are simply people who don't go on the Internet. They watch TV and they have a very misinformed view of what's actually going on and what she's saying. And part of why I say that is because when you think about like your grandpa who's 70 years old, when they hear that and he doesn't really use social media, he doesn't understand how it works, he doesn't understand how important the internet actually is for free speech nowadays, he'll hear that and either say, well, I don't really care about that because he doesn't notice the threat it poses. Again, he doesn't use the internet. He doesn't know how to even, he doesn't even know how the internet works, right? Or B, you know, because he already doesn't like social media and he's gaslit over these this idea of these Chinese bots or something like that, he's going to say, well, I think that's a great idea. Right. But again, what does the point go back to? The only people outside of those who are malicious, right, the donors, the corrupt people in our country who support Nikki Haley are Republican voters who are horribly uninformed or they just don't get it. And that's the honest truth. OK, so I think Rand Paul puts it there pretty masterfully. He actually posted we'll kind of read it for, uh, you know, breaking it down here. He posted a thread after this going into detail about, again, the reasons he does not support Nikki Haley. And this more or less summarizes at least most of the same reasons I do not support her. So he went on on Twitter to say that based on Nikki Haley's record and campaign, I don't see how any thoughtful or informed libertarian or conservative should vote for Nikki Haley. If you agree, let your voice be heard. Go to nevernikki.net today so we can let her know. Again, that's a shout out. Be sure to visit Never Nikki. But here's what he had to say. He said, Nikki Haley supports Biden and McConnell in the forever war, or I should say, and the forever war crowd on funding for the war in Ukraine. Her thirst for war is so strong that she actually said, quote, I'm sick of talking about a Department of Defense. I want a Department of Offense, end quote. And by the way, I never even heard her say that. I didn't even know she said that. But again, it's like, why do people not why do people not get it regarding Nikki Haley? Because they don't know the things that Nikki Haley has said. But let me say that statement is so unbelievably unhinged and ridiculous. And it basically, in my eyes, is a confirmation that this insane, maniacal, corrupt woman who's bought out by the military industrial complex definitely wants to go to war because let me say it right here the purpose of our military at least in my eyes morally speaking is not supposed to be an offensive force it is a defensive force right i do not believe that the United States should just go invading other countries for no reason. I believe in, if you ever seen the movie American Sniper, I basically believe in the sheepdog principle, and that's not just something I apply to foreign policy, it's something I also apply to my personal life, which is, look, you know, if someone messes with you, if someone bullies you, if someone attacks you, yes, you need to be strong in order to fight back. And you definitely do fight back and you don't cower away from that situation. But at the same time, you also don't go around bullying others, taking from others. Right. Your job as sort of the peacemaker here is to actually just make sure you don't get picked on and stop yourself from getting picked on. But you also don't go the bully. You don't also be the bully and attack others. Right. That's why it's called the department. Department of defense and not offense. But if she wants a department of offense, what is that code word for saying directly to the military industrial complex? It means I want forever war. I want pointless war. We will go on the offensive and just basically invade countries because we don't like them. And again, you guys,
guys can say that I'm reading too much into that, but I don't think I am at all because that statement actually sums up her philosophy on foreign policy, which is that the United States military is not supposed to be a defensive force. It's supposed to be an imperialistic force, right? A conquering force, uh, conquering for the name of, I don't know, liberal democracy or George Floyd or something like that. Rand Paul goes on to say she even personally received millions of dollars from the arms merchants who, who benefit from the war, a conflict of interest that undergirds her eagerness for military intervention. Again, I brought that up, the Boeing stuff, that's all on the record. And I'm sure, let me just say, I'm sure some of the money for her campaign is coming from uh, the defense industry itself. I don't have confirmation of that, but I'd be very suspicious. Some of you guys can look into the FEC reports and let me know if that's true. Uh, she, he goes on to say, this position isn't new either. As governor of South Carolina, she gave tax dollars to those same arms merchants by the way, I love that Rand is calling them arms merchants because that's honestly pretty accurate of what some of the defense industry is in our country. And they showered her with campaign contributions and a seat on their board when she left office. While most others were decrying the mistakes of the past 20 years and fighting for an America first foreign policy, Nikki Haley was aligning herself with and declaring her foreign policy allies to be John McCain and Lindsey Graham that is absolutely so true. He continues. He's going off. He's going off here. We really love to see it. Okay. Nikki Haley believes in unlimited foreign aid or nearly unlimited foreign aid. We have sent over 100 billion to Ukraine that we don't have already. And she wants more, but this is also not new in her book. With all due respect, she wrote that quote, humanitarian assistance will always be a priority for the United States. And we will always be generous. And of of course, we all know that humanitarian assistance is a code word that means send foreign aid to as many countries as possible and as much as possible and keep being generous because apparently America is the world. The, the American taxpayers, I should say, are the world's piggy bank for everything that doesn't involve the United States. That's the truth. But Nikki Haley's generosity with your tax dollars and her support for all foreign aid in the context of a thirty four trillion dollar debt it is is in no way libertarian or conservative. That is correct. Which is, of course, also ironic because she the past month or so has been going on tirades about how none of the other real conservatives care about the national debt and she's going to fix the national debt. It's like, OK, Nikki, I see the girl math that you do with our foreign policy. I think you're the last person who's going to fix the deficit. Let me say that because you are obsessed with sending money all around the world. And but but I'm sure that because you're going to cut Social Security or something like that, that means you're going to fix the debt. Really? Nobody believes you. OK, uh, beyond the issues of endless wars, Nikki Haley's respect, lack of respect, I should say, for freedom of speech is shocking to anyone who believes in the Constitution. Nikki Haley believes that all Internet posters should be registered and verified. This flies in the face of a free American republic whose founders wrote anonymously the Federalist Papers. Great point. That's very true and routinely pay, posted newspaper articles and pamphlets under pseudonyms. But of course, apparently none of that matters. The founding fathers don't matter. Constitution, free speech, national security state that is unconstitutional. None of that matters because Nikki Haley thinks that mean things are said about her on social media and she doesn't like it. It's dividing the country. And, you know, apparently she thinks that uh, Iranian bots are just running rampant on social media. And that's the actual reason that social media is so broken. Yeah, newsflash. That's not true. It's really about because people say mean things about her. She doesn't like that. It's divisive. She wants your name and ID. She wants to dox you in order for you to use social media. Yeah, OK. Uh, anyways, anyone who doesn't fully believe in free speech or who wants endless war has no business anywhere near the White House. Go to never Nikki dot net to show you agree but wait there's more he's still going chat okay nikki haley routinely praised the mission of the united nations the results they achieved and the people who ran it which of course is insane when you consider the un uh is basically a failure he says first up her quote i believe the un does valuable work by that she means your tax dollars since the u.s is the primary founder of the un Ooh. 
Sick burn there, Senator Paul. Uh, she repeatedly praised the U.N. Secretary General, who is the former president of Socialist International, and declared that they think alike. Very interesting, right? Very interesting. Nikki Haley disagreed with President Trump's decision to pull U.S. troops out of Syria and Afghanistan and defended continued U.S. presence in both places. Very interesting. I do remember that, but honestly, I've not brought up that talking point before. Thank you, Rand. I'm going to start using that one now. OK, he continues. If you want to move quickly to domestic policy in South Carolina, Nikki Haley advocated for a gas tax hike, a state run vaccine registry and never lifted a finger for school choice. Wow. <laughs> wow, ladies and gentlemen. So you love to see it. Rand Paul absolutely tore her a new one. Will Nikki Haley be responding to this? Of course not. And no one's ever going to ask her because she never takes a hard interview. Why do you think she never does uh, the popular podcast on the Internet? She won't even do Pierce Morgan. For God's sake, she won't even do Pierce Morgan. So why is that, ladies and gentlemen? Of course, it's because she does not want to be confronted with any of the hard questions, because it's actually very hard to defend Nikki Haley when you have the facts on the record. OK, again, how does she get away with the circus? How does she get away with the act? Because corporate media protects her. That includes Fox News. And she just kind of runs around and says the same things and pretends as if she's not a corrupt neocon war hawk. And hopefully the more people hear stuff like this, I hope, I hope this is where our party is. The more people will be dissuaded from voting for Nikki Haley in the Iowa caucus on Monday. With that said, folks, let me know your thoughts on this Rand Paul video in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts on some of his arguments, because to tell you the truth, I do bring up the Boeing stuff. I bring up some of the foreign policy stuff, obviously the social media stuff. But Rand actually brought up a lot of other interesting points that I haven't used before on Nikki Haley. And uh, assuming she makes it past the Iowa caucus, hmm, might have to start using there. So, yeah, let me know. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Let me know who has your support in the 2024 GOP primary. And until next time, alpha moves only. God bless. Have a very good day. Peace.